All right, where were we? I think we were here. So in this episode, what we're going to do is we're going to make the brushes a little bit more variable so that we don't get just this very static appearance. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to put all the brushes in a corner because that's actually how you do it. Um, you don't try and spread from the middle unless you've got a death wish because then you'll dominate one corner and you'll end up painting yourself into that corner as you saw. But if we start uh, in a corner, then we'll go out into the middle and then we'll fill in the whole map nicely. So we arbitrarily start in a corner, as I recall. Actually, it might be here in the... Yeah, here it is. Uh, no, wait. Where do we start? Um... No, that's brush. Sorry, every time I start up uh, MonoDevelop, it starts up on a random file. Ah, there we are. So we'll start at, say, 10 and 10, rather than 100 and 100. And now when we hit play, you'll see that we fill a lot more of the screen. Now the reason that we have this uh, occasional spurts of, of, uh, uh, of density, whereas other places are very, very bare, that's actually because we have a brush limit of 10. So what happens is you get all these brushes racing up the side of the screen, and then when one of them goes off, it spawns the next brush to request a stroke. So that's why we have that set up. And if we were to increase our maximum simultaneous strokes to 100, you would see that we would have a much, much denser mesh. But we still hit the cap, I think. Well, anyhow, uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to go ahead and change it so that instead of always spawning the first of the brushes, it's going to spawn intelligently what the next brush it wants to spawn. Uh, it's going to spawn the next brush it wants to spawn without uh, without screwing up. Uh, we're going to make it spawn a brush that's not the same as all... It, it, it's just ten, <sighs> there's ten brushes in our list of transition states. We're going to go ahead and transition to different ones. Thank you. <sighs> Alright, so here we are in stroke, and you can see that we just say transition zero. What we actually need to do is we need to have several different types of transition. One of the things that, we're, that we tend to do here, uh, when we run out of steps, we actually spawn a new brush, but we never stop with the brush we're currently using. What we're going to do is we're going to have it so that there's a maximum number of uh, uh, strokes. So here we're going to say steps and strokes, like so. And uh, when we create a brush, this.strokes equals random.range, uh, one five, and what that'll do is uh, we'll go through that many st that many iterations of step spawn, step spawn, step spawn. Uh, so here, when we do steps, we also need strokes, like so. Uh, I don't think that we need to worry about that being initialized wrong. So if steps is greater than brush dot steps, then strokes plus plus. If strokes is greater than or equal to brush dot strokes. kill us off. So we're actually going to go ahead and make this a little bit different. Um, we're going to, instead of putting this here, we're going to put it up at the top, like this. Uh, this is actually trying to figure out the best place to put it. Right here, right here is best. So if uh, strokes is greater than brush.strokes, then remove us, and new stroke.brush equals this. Otherwise, new stroke.brush equals that. Um, there are some edge cases, so we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to go ahead and completely split these off. Um, I guess we don't need the else if we're returning. All right. So basically, we transition to one brush when we run out of brush, and we transition to another brush when we hit a certain number of steps. We can also transition again here in this not can paint. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and spawn ourselves a brush going the other direction. So. Uh, 
uh, grab this stuff and put it here. And uh, we remove ourselves and then we put a new brush in our own position. Um, so this is actually going to malfunction. I just remembered. We're doing some very, very basic checking, uh, which will screw that up. So we can't, we're not going to put that piece in yet. We'll maybe put it into the end of this episode or next episode. Wow, this is a really boring brush. Let's try that again. Nope. Let's go ahead and add in some quick debug lines. There's lots of noise all of a sudden, so I'm going to pause and do that off screen. Now oh, there's the problem. I moved this. I, I need it in both places, not just one, like so. So now when we try it, we will occasionally get something good, but most of the time we'll get something crappy. But you can see the potential starting to come out just a little bit. You're starting to be able to see what's going on just a tiny, tiny bit. And this really hasn't been very long. I mean, it feels like a long time because I'm parceling it out 10 minutes a day. But this is really live. Um, the length of the series is how long it takes to program this. It really is a two-hour project if you know what you're doing. Uh, but there are a couple of things I want to change in this episode. One of the things is this width, which is supposed to be between 1 and 5, but I can't actually see that. So I'm going to make it between 1 and 15. Um, and we're also going to go ahead and change the max simul... No, wait. I think it's better if we actually... Uh, over here in Map Maker, when we create a stroke here, we're going to go ahead and create two strokes. Like that. Uh, yeah, that'll do. The other thing we're going to do is here in Brush, in Get uh, Delta in Direction here, we're going to add an arbitrary amount to the range. Uh, just because that way uh, we'll have a little bit of randomness. That was interesting. Not quite what I expected. It looks like the width paint is actually broken. Um, so let me go ahead and see what's up with that. Alright, so I'm not actually sure what's wrong with this function, but it's clearly not painting uh, when it should be. Um, and there's a couple of things I need to change about this function anyway, and one of them is that we've got this px, p, px, px. We're doing the, we're always painting along the x-axis. We actually need to paint along whatever axis we're not traveling on. So in order to do that, we need to pass in the dx and the dy. Like so. We also need to put that into can paint. And what we're going to do is we're going to make these for loops uh, significantly more um, interesting. So int uh, uh, x length equals dx times uh, mathf.abs dx times uh, width. Might as well divide that by 2 so that we don't have to multiply, so we don't have to divide it by 2 every time we use it. And y length equals dy times height times width divided by 2. There we are. And then here, we do px equals x minus x length. px is less than or equal to x plus x length. And px plus plus. And then inside, we do py equals y minus y length. And py equals y plus y length. py plus plus. And once again, make sure you get those right, or else you may get stuck in an infinite loop. And I think this part might be the problem. Um, I think it might be might be short circuiting something to use this short this notation here. So we're going to go ahead and just say if maker.setcolor pxpy color, then painted something equals true. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and grab this stuff and put it down here too. All right, so I'm not sure whether that fixed it, but I do know that we need to actually pass the correct painting call here, uh, x, y, dx, dy, 
and down here xy dx dy. Let's go ahead and press play. I don't know if you can hear the copious amount of shouting in the background. Oh, you know, I just realized... No, wait, that's not it. Um, here in MapMaker, we do start on the same stroke both times, the same brush both times. Let's go ahead and specify a different brush each. But it looks like there's a bug. So let me go ahead and figure out what that is. Uh, the color is that... The problem is here, when we have this color, it does not equal black. When uh, we return a color from off the side of the texture, we return clear, as you might remember. If call does not equal black, then return false. But we're actually okay with it also being clear. Um, we consider clear to be a paintable color, even though that doesn't make any sense. No, that didn't fix it. What is going on? Yeah, as expected, the problem was in fact that these brushes were painting off the side of the script, off the side of the scene rather. So uh, set color actually returns false if you try and paint off the left or right, which meant that uh, even though it could can, even though can paint was returning correctly. Um, uh, paint was returning that it wasn't painting correctly whenever it painted off the side. Uh, and so I just moved them uh, away from the edge far enough that they... No, it, it worked last time I hit play. Interesting. Stroke cannot paint. Let me go ahead and take a look at this. As usual, it's because I'm very stupid. I just undid a couple of changes I did to track this down. Um, DX, DY, when we, when we send over the brush for DX, DY, that's the direction the brush is traveling. We want to actually make X length and Y length the opposite of that, because you want to paint wide and travel along that width, not paint along the width that you're traveling. <sighs> So this is di, and this is dx, and this is dy, and this is dx. Uh, sorry. There we are. That's more like it. They're not, um... They didn't spawn very much in the way of children, though, did they? And they didn't seem to expire correctly. Um, is there another bug? Well, first off, let's get rid of that loud-ass color debug. See, they shouldn't be going up all the time. They should be turning. Oh, of course they're not turning. Um, the delta in direction, you remember all that gibberish I was talking about last time where I said, oh, we've got to make sure that you get out of the current room you're in before you stop and return? That's because it won't turn left because it sees that there's already been a room painted there and it's not interested in painting that room. So now is the time when we have to start to consider how we're going to actually calculate out which direction we want our brushes to go. Uh, we can make them turn, but unfortunately, uh, when we do, they will consider it to be an unpaintable uh, brick because it's gonna be red. So what we're gonna have to do, and this is gonna wait until next time, we're actually gonna make them paint walls. Uh, this is the piece that I kind of left off until now, but what we actually want these brushes to do is not just paint rooms, but paint walls. So we're going to have color.clear and color.black, and we're also going to have a, a wall color, and the wall color will be what we don't want to paint through. Um, and I will go ahead and handle that next episode. I'm sorry that this episode I didn't get a whole lot done. And I did, in fact, end up making things worse because I broke the ability for the brushes to turn. But, believe it or not, we're almost there.